All right, welcome back everyone. In this video, we're looking at how to set your pivot points in the different places uh, of our hierarchy. So we have those here. Um, I just wanted to show you real quick what I usually like to do for creating those, uh, those pivot information. So um, first of all, when creating a rotating rig, I like to keep my pivots on the pegs directly. So embedded inside of the layer properties of each peg here under the pivot information. So as you can see, there are no function curves associated with the pivot information, meaning that this is going to be a static value. So because this is going to be a static value and that I'm going to move around some pieces quite a bit, um, I like to have some indicator as to where this pivot information is. Because right now when I click on my piece, I can see where the pivot point is. So located over here. But once I go into my drawing tools and I want to start over a new drawing and I don't have uh, any information whatsoever, I may draw it in the wrong place, offset to the pivot point, and then I have to go and manually reposition the hand. Um, so this is not really something that I'd like to do for, um, for every single redraw that I have to do. So um, instead of doing that, I'm going to go into every single drawing of my hierarchy and go and position a little pivot indicator uh, in the underlay layer. Now, because the underlay layer is the one that I'm going to least often use, I thought it would be a good, uh, a good place to go and set that little information and hide it away from the rest of the rig when we animate it. So let's go over to our underlay and I'm going to go over to my color palette and one of the colors that I had already previously created inside of here is my pivot color. So I'm going to be using that color to go and create the little point that will be the indicator for my pivot points. So um, ideally, if you still have your ellipses from the, uh, the previous clean, you could set those pivot points according with those. Otherwise, pretty easy. We can go in there and go and create another ellipse. So over here, I already have one in here. If you want, you can create your point from about where you think the center is going to be. So let's say something like this. If you didn't really have that point before, uh, you could just as easily recalculate it. Let's try to keep the line about the same size as the arm. So I think we have a size three in here and let's go over and try to create our circle to about the size it should be. Let's move that over and once we have the proper size we want to set our little indicator down in the center right here. So we don't want it to be too big, we don't want it to be too small either, we want to be able to see it pretty clearly and be precise enough. So uh, over at the middle of where my pivot point should be for the forearm over here. Um, I'm going to go and grab my brush tool. Just try to create a little point. Right now it's way too big. Let's resize that holding down O. I'm going to make it about this size here. So I'm going to take my select tool again, grab my circle, because right now this is a really precise pivot point that I have to put in. Uh, I'm relying on that ellipse. I'm going to press B to switch over to my brush and just click to create my pivot indicator. So once I have this one here, I can get rid of that circle and I can go around to the other pieces. Uh, something like the sleeve, for instance, I can set my pivot down where the uh, bottom of the sleeve is going to be. Sometimes it will be a little bit easier to go and position it from there since this is the piece that will most often want to reposition. I may want to have the pivot point of my arm here to be about at the center over here. Pretty useful to go and just have both visible at the same time to kind of figure what is going on and where we're going to put this. And of course the hand over here will have the pivot in the center of the wrist over on this side. So you could use the ellipse again for positioning the one for the hand. 
All the other less precise ones, let's say we're talking about the little pieces of hair that we have over here, I still like to put one down just to have an even result in all of the other ones that we have. And this way it allows me to have a bit more consistency. So now that we have all of our little markers down, I'll see you guys in the next video where we can actually bring that information over to our pegs.